Okay, hi and welcome back to the uh, LRTV. I've been uh, fairly busy at work, so yeah, I thought I'd take the camera in there and I'd uh, smash out some more videos. Last week I uh, showed you the bottom drawer of my toolbox, in fact I showed you the whole of my toolbox just about, and uh, the ABS uh, diagnostic cables. Um, yeah, this job of mine is fairly uh, sophisticated, hammers to uh, using oscilloscopes, and uh, yeah, it is a, a multi-skilled uh, sort of job. Oscilloscope, yes, I do a lot of uh, diagnostics with it as well. It's a quick way of checking uh, wheel poles and sensor rings. I just thought I'd tell you that this, actually the hub hasn't been uh, wound in all the way, so the uh, the wheel pole or the wheel sensor is quite away from the uh, um, reluctor ring. So, yeah, basically what we do quite often, if we do have an ABS fault, and this is the old-fashioned way, is to uh, have a look at the uh, exciter ring visually and see if there's any damage or any corrosion, if there's a tooth missing or if there's a dent, which is quite hard to do sometimes. Um, you can see how hard it is to actually look in there and... Uh, what we uh, do, or what I do, is use an oscilloscope. Now, this one has actually a flat lined. Um, and you can see here that the cable for the ABS sensor, or the wheel sensor, has been trapped by the uh, axle rope. Okay, so that, on this diagnostic equi equipment, which I plugged in earlier, that gave me a fault code at the top there, sensor on wheel F, or YE2, as we know it as, a cable break or short circuit. And yes, indeed, we did find a cable break there. But to confirm it, we used the oscilloscope to make sure there wasn't a signal coming out of that. Generally, um, with a, a new sensor, what Dino's fitted, you can check with a multimeter. As you spin the wheel, the exciter ring will excite the exciter pole, and it will give you an AC voltage. Now, this is half of what it actually is completely generating. But you can see here that the oscilloscope actually does do a voltage reading, and I can use uh, key points on a recording to see exactly what it's putting out. I will hasten to add this is actually uh, an analog ABS sensor on here. There are different types, of course. That's a lovely strong signal, that is. Yeah. Just got to show you spinning the wheel. Yeah, wheel spinning. Yeah, yeah, all right. So if you can just if you can just root that, make that cable a bit longer, root it properly. Yeah. So we're going to get caught, and then we're sorted with that. And we've got to put a plug on the front here. Yeah. All right. Okay. So I also use this one for assembly when I'm putting stuff back together, and in this case, it had a new exciter ring. It's basically a quick way of seeing to make sure that I've got a decent signal. And uh, yeah, that looks fine. That's that's okay. This obviously is relative to all vehicles with ABS sensors on, not just uh, these trailers. You'll find that this is actually an external one. Some of the Discovery's uh, defenders are internal, except for the rears, they will be external. And they'll have less teeth because the wheels are smaller. These are quite big wheels. The exciter rings, uh, especially these, they, they tend to rot. And once they start to rot, they give a, an intermittent signal. And if you lose a couple of teeth because they've corroded, you get a, an ABS fault. This one actually is just very, very low voltage. It's 0 0.01, which is not acceptable. The uh, minimum really is 0 0.5 of a volt. Um, generated at one meter per second and you can see there's hardly anything there so anyway um, after uh, permission granted by the uh, operator of the trailer I uh, can go ahead and I've actually got to change the disc because uh, this one the ring is bolted into the disc however it's see solid I won't be able to change it without ruining the disc another type of uh, exciter ring is a tin type and you'll find these on some cars as well they, um, this one has got a dent in it. You can see that very, very clearly. Now, this came up with a, an EBS fault. Well, it's ABS because it's a pole and exciter. However, the EBS threw a dummy out of the pram and uh, threw a warning light up in the cab. You can see spinning this at one meter per second. You've got a good signal, a fairly good signal, which is about two volts, and then it drops to almost nothing at all. So that's where the dent is, and very quick visual way of seeing it. Now, after changing the um, 
the exciter ring you can see that the signal is very very consistent and now that's what we're looking for is uh, two volts uh, a meter per second actually i think i'll span it a bit quicker okay so i know some of your apprentices in the hdv trade are watching this this is a uh, a thor number four copper and uh, hide headed hammer now with wheel studs and this is relevant to all you land rover guys as well wheel studs you don't want to damage them to whack them out so using a uh, copper headed hammer that basically you can whack the shit out of them and this is quite a heavy one as well this will uh, knock wheel studs out and these are very hard to get out sometimes they tend to seize in and i'll just turn the volume up here so you can hear the workshop and uh, how hard i'm hitting this This is one of these jobs I love because it's, uh, it's exercise for the day and I'll tell you it is a very hot day. Right, so smashing the wheel studs out, you can see that they're not even damaged. Get the wheel nuts back on when I want to. When the disc is being reassembled, I can use uh, just a, a normal hammer. This saves the copper from uh, being damaged any further. Obviously the company pay for the replacement heads. But in the meantime, use a hammer properly. You hold the hammer right at the end of the shaft, as I tell my apprentices, not on the uh, near the head. And talking of apprentices, uh, they're uh, pretty good tools to have in a workshop, but you uh, they've got no handles or anything like that. They have uh, programmable buttons, and uh, once you're programmed, you can then tune them in to uh, help you out. And after a while, they then can do the jobs themselves. Look at this lovely bit of aluminium welding. We didn't do that. No, actually, we uh, have to send it off because we don't have a TIG welder in the workshop. Anyway, just a little tip here. You've got drill bits of all sizes, and the bigger they are, the more chances that somebody in the workshop is not going to own them. So, as with all cutting devices that I personally own, I do not lend them out because people fuck them up. Right, so this one, on a die grinder, I have uh, some, uh, oh, Jesus, I can't even remember the name of them. Uh, you'll see them uh, on tall vans. You'll see them advertised on uh, on eBay. Don't buy the cheap ones because they do not last. The expensive ones, this kit cost about 150 quid, and it probably, um, looking after it, will last a lifetime, especially if it's used on soft metals. You can see here, I'm just using it to grind out where I can't get an angle grinder into properly. And then I'm welding up this, uh, it, well actually it was a crack on, on the landing leg. Just drop some weld in there and fine, that's all done. And it's a tool to, to clean up stuff and uh, you'll be surprised how useful the tool actually is. Now you can see my welding, how much uh, shit there is around on there. Not the best. But today's little uh, catch you out is uh, somebody uh, put this on uh, Pulse. Not good because that was not straight away understandable. 